So I'm pretty thrilled because this past Wednesday I finally had the opportunity to watch Shin Godzilla in theaters and if you've watched my videos over the past few months, you know that I've been really anticipating this film and flailing about it at any chance that I can. Well, I finally watched it and I have to say that I really enjoyed it and it's quickly inching up there on my list of favorite Godzilla films. Not only that, but it was amazing having the opportunity to share in this experience with other Godzilla fans because the theater was packed. And shout out to my friend Tiffany who joined me on my sojourn to the movie theater, which was like 50 miles away to see Godzilla. If you have an aversion to spoilers, you may want to click away because, as I discussed the synopsis, plot, characters, music, and even Godzilla himself, I will be divulging different aspects of the film. So if you do not care about spoilers, or if you have watched it already, feel free to continue watching. So, to summarize the film in a few sentences, it revolves around some sort of accident that happens out in Tokyo Bay involving nuclear waste, and Godzilla ends up rising out of the ocean and attacking the city, and the majority of the movie revolves around how Japan deals with this type of, I guess, quote-unquote, natural disaster. This movie is highly political. Many have called it a political satire, which I would agree, because this movie in a way makes fun of the... Japanese government's dilemma when it came to dealing with the Fukushima power plant after the earthquake and tsunami back in 2011. So this is very fresh in their minds and it's a modern take on Godzilla. So it branches away from the nuclear war metaphor that Godzilla used to be and it focuses more on Godzilla being a metaphor for nuclear waste being a threat to the environment. Moving onward to the effects in the film, I have to say that the effects were amazing. This is the first time Godzilla has been 100% digitally rendered, and I have to say that they did a great job doing it. I do have a few criticisms on a couple scenes, but that can wait until later when I talk about criticisms. Overall, Godzilla was very menacing. He looked terrifying. He was very lumbering. They really captured Suitmation very well doing this type of digital effect, so I think it's amazing. Keep in mind, I'm not a professional when it comes to digital effects, so I'm just speaking my mind of what I saw. I really liked the story because I found the political undertones extremely interesting. If you are a geek when it comes to Japanese culture or government like myself, you will probably enjoy this movie a lot because you get to see many of the inner workings of the government. When Godzilla does appear, one conference or committee is trying to figure out one thing, another conference or committee is trying to figure out another thing, the military has their own meetings, the environmental section of the government has their meetings, and everyone's just trying to figure out what the hell to do because we have this giant creature, how are we supposed to handle this type of situation? What ends up happening in the movie is that they end up getting a team of professors, scientists, and other, I guess you could say, scholarly deviants together in order to crack the whole Godzilla case. Think I, I kind of looked at it as like this think tank of people learning about Godzilla, and they are the ones who ended up actually being able to tell the government some information. And I thought that was a very cool, interesting twist, because it kind of made me feel connected to that group of people a little bit, because they aren't the usual politician, they aren't the usual scientist or educator, they are the deviants who are very intelligent, but who don't necessarily fit into the rules and structure of whatever group that they are associated with. And that brings me to discussing the characters, because in this film we are inundated with dozens and dozens of characters because we see so many different sectors of the government trying to figure out this whole dilemma with Godzilla. And it's interesting because I really didn't feel like I could relate to any of the characters. At first I was a little bit upset with that because I'm always craving some sort of human connection in a Godzilla film, but I'm really thinking that Hideaki Anno and Shinji Higuchi weren't trying to achieve that. The whole film was about the function in politics, the political processes that are very long drawn out and often do not result in any sort of solution to any problem. So I believe that instead of focusing on the characters, they wanted us to focus on the process itself. Really, the only character development that we get to see is the discussion each character has about their political ventures in the future and what they want to achieve, people making bribes with one another, oh, well, when this situation's over, I will give you this position when I am elected to office. Really, my favorite character in this entire film, favorite human character, mind you, 
is the young woman who is a part of that group of scholarly deviants who I think I think she was a marine biologist or a biologist of some sort and she was just like cracking out all the information she was like I know my shit you don't know your shit sorry and she just seemed kind of apathetic and sarcastic and since I am rather apathetic and sarcastic I could relate to her on that level and I really enjoyed her character. I hope we may get to see her character in some future Godzilla film as well. I cannot remember her name off the top of my head and it's driving me crazy. Moving forward to the music in the film, I absolutely loved uh, Shiro Sagisu's score because it complemented very well with the Akira Ifukubi score that we got to see. And Ifukubi is the composer that is pretty well known throughout the Godzilla fandom because he has scored countless films. It helped me connect to the older films hearing those familiar cues and songs and I thought that was pulled off effectively. Coming back to Godzilla again, I have to say that he definitely is the driving force of the film. Even though he kind of pales in comparison to this whole political process that is being parodied in a way. He is the central problem, and we get to see some really amazing scenes of him destroying the city, and we get to see him transform over the course of the film, where he starts in this kind of pre-evolved state where he can barely walk, he just crawls around, and this he has gills, he's spewing blood everywhere. It was a very cute, adorable stage of Godzilla, but at the same time it was extremely creepy. And I think that's what made Godzilla so interesting in this film, because he's very anomalous, he's very transformative and creepy, and you don't really know how he works and amidst all the babble that they spout, like all the scientific babble, it's still hard to decipher what Godzilla actually is and how he functions. We know that he functions consuming nuclear waste, but we don't know the whole function of his evolution process, which is really scary to a lot of the characters in the film. Broadening out a little bit, I want to talk about the cultural significance in the film as well, because there are a lot of dynamics between Japan and foreign countries, as we see in many Godzilla films, like The Return of Godzilla and Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. There's definitely a political undertone and a con bit of contention between Japan and other countries like the United States. And there are a lot of jabs at Americans in this film because America wants to solve the Godzilla problem by just dropping a nuke on Godzilla and basically destroying all or a significant part of Tokyo. Of course, Japan is very resilient to this. Now, for me, this is where things started to get interesting because the more and more the movie focused on the government coming together and making this choice to follow their own plan as opposed to the forced American dependence, I realized that the movie is not expecting us to focus on the individual characters, but expecting us to focus on Godzilla as a character and Japan as a whole as a character, because it's that collective will to make that decision that ultimately is the turning point in the film. Now, there are many instances where there is a lot of contention between Japan and the United States, a lot of implied contention, because everyone makes subtle comments about America always feeling the need to be in control of everything, and eventually, at the end of the movie, it's the joined forces of Japan, America, and other United Nations countries that ends up handling the Godzilla situation. I won't say that they dealt with it, but at least temporarily handled it. Many American fans have been voicing negative opinions about Japan's nationalism in this film. And it really didn't bother me at all because I can understand why they feel this way, why they are making jabs at America, because, again, they have had a type of forced dependence over the past few decades. And in the film, it reflects that, and it's an example of that, because they are taking a situation that's a specific threat to the country and handling it on their own. I think the directors did a very good job making that political highlight in that part of the movie. The point that I want to make to a lot of American fans is that when we are watching a movie that is not only created by a different culture, but that's also immersed in that culture, we need to look at the different 
variables and nuances occurring within that cultural context. We tend to be very Amerocentric. If that is even a word, if it isn't, it is one now. The end of the film was amazing. It ends on a cliffhanger. I'm not going to go into elaborate detail about that because I want you guys to watch that yourselves. But it was a very creepy scene and it was amazing and it leaves it open to another film. So if you guys have watched the movie, please share your thoughts in the comment section below. Um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. I'm obviously going to be talking more about Godzilla in the future. And thank you guys for taking the time to watch. Have a great rest of your day. Godzilla is going to be up for two more days in theaters. Make sure that you go get a chance to see it if you haven't yet.